ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها فان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وانما توعدون لات وما انتم بمعجزين like to welcome you all for continuation of reading and reviewing مختصر منهج القاصدين for Imam Ibn Qudama al-Maqdisi the methodology of the seekers and this is going to be the seventh class inshallah reviewing the book and tonight we are going to be reading about the book of fasting and the wisdom behind it inshallah tafaddal bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah the book of sound you should know that fasting is specified with a characteristic which is not found in other than it and this is its being annexed by Allah as he glorified it he says in hadith qudsi fasting is for me and i reward it muttafaqan alay agreed upon this annexing is enough to establish its excellence just as he honored the house by annexing it saying wa tahhir baytiya and purify my house this is from surah al-hajj verse number 26 as for the excellence of saum then it has two underlying meanings the first is that it is a secret deed and internal act which the creation do not see and which does not include showing off The second is that it overpowers the enemy of Allah i.e. shaitan for the path of the enemy is that of the desires and the desires are strengthened by eating and drinking as long as the ground of desire is fertile the shaitan will continue returning to it for pasture by leaving off the desires the paths are narrowed in the up narrowed in upon them section on the manner and the sunnah of saw it is beloved that one eats suhoor they laying it until just before fajr it is also beloved that one rush in breaking fast and one breaks fast upon dates it is beloved to be generous during ramadan and do good deeds and increase in giving sadaqa following the example of allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam in that it is beloved to study the quran and to make itikaf during ramadan especially during the last 10 days and to make an extra effort therein the two sahihs reported that aisha radiyallahu anha said the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to when the last 10 days of ramadan would come tighten his belt and spend the night awake and wake up his family the ulama have mentioned two explanations concerning the meaning of tightening his belt the first is that it means avoiding women the second is that it is an allusion to his seriousness and his buckling down and doing good deeds and they said the reason for his extra efforts was seeking out later to cover and sound is of three types the sound of the general public the saum of the elite 
and the psalm of the elite of the elite. So as for the psalm of the general public, then it is withholding the stomach and private parts from partaking in their desires. As for the psalm of the elite, then it is withholding the gaze, the tongue, the hand, the foot, the hearing, the sight, and the rest of the limbs from sinning. And as for the psalm of the elite of the elite, then it is withholding the heart from lowly concerns and thoughts which take one away from Allah and refraining it from everything other than Allah altogether. So the manners of psalm of the elite include lowering the gaze, holding the tongue from every harmful form of speech, whether forbidden, disliked, or unbeneficial, and guarding the rest of the limbs. Al-Bukhari reported that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever does not leave off false speech and acting upon that, then Allah has no need for him leaving his food and drink. And amongst his meaning are that he should not eat his field at night, but rather he should eat measuredly. For the son of Adam does not fill any container which is worse than his stomach. When he eats his field in the first part of the night, he does not benefit himself during the rest of it. Similarly, if he eats his field at the time of suhoor, he does not benefit himself until sahar. Sahar? Sahar is different from suhoor. Similarly, if he eats his field at the time of sahar, he does not benefit himself until close to dhuhr, as eating a lot leads to laziness and weakness. Then, on top of this, the aim of Saum is lost by eating a lot, as its aim is that he feels the pains of hunger and the leave of his desires. Section concerning the voluntary Saum. As for voluntary Saum, then you should know that the beloved status of Saum is underscored on certain days of excellence. Some of the days of excellence occur at certain times within the year, such as the fasting of the six days out of Shawwal after Ramadan, fasting the day of Arafah and the day of Ashura, and fasting the first ten days of Dhul Hijjah and the month of Muharram. Others occur every month, such as fasting at the beginning of the month, its middle, and its end. So, whoever fasts at the beginning of the month, its middle, and its end has done well, although it is better of him to fast during the three days of the full moon. Others occur every week, namely fasting on Mondays and Thursdays. The best psalm is the psalm of the Prophet Da'ud, alayhi salam, who used to fast one day and eat on the next. This contained three secrets. The first is that the soul is given its rights on the day of eating, and then it fulfills its portion of worship on the day of Saul. Thus, it combines between what is for it and what is asked of it, and this is fair balance. The second is that the day of eating is a day of thankfulness, while the day of Saum is a day of patience, and Iman is to have thankfulness and patience. The third is that it is harder on the soul in regards to Mujahidan, Mujahida, as every time it becomes comfortable with one state, it is moved to the next. It has been reported by Muslim from Abu Qatada that Umar radiallahu an asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the one who fasts all the time. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he did not fast nor eat. Instead, the one who fasts all the time, mm -hmm. that means fast is a whole year. Mm -hmm. Or you can talk but between two princes, mm -hmm. okay, the whole year. What about the one who fasts the whole year? Mm -hmm. About the one who fasts mm -hmm. the whole year. Mm -hmm. The whole year. Unless both of them carry the same meaning. Uh, 
all the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Similar meaning. Okay. So he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, said he did not fast nor eat. Mm -hmm. Because it's not the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had explained that the best fasting is the fasting of the Prophet Dawood. He used to do what? Fast every other day. So there is nothing better than this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if somebody will go and fast every day, so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying that he's not. He didn't fast, neither he break his fast. Mm. That means it's not acceptable. Mm. This is understood to refer to he who fasts those days upon which fasting is forbidden. As for if he eats on the two days of Eid and the days of Tashrif, then there is no harm in that. For it has been reported from Hisham ibn Urwa that his father used to fast continuously, and Aisha radiallahu anha used to fast continuously. And Anas radiallahu an said, Abu Talha fasted continuously for 40 years after the death of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That means you understand, with the exception, not to fast, you understand, because there are certain days you could not fast, okay? Like Saturday. You are not supposed to fast. Day of Eid, you are not supposed to fast. Ayam uh, al-Tashriq, unless you are making Hajj and you don't have the means to slaughter an animal, okay? So, does not mean fasting the whole year. Mm -hmm. Okay. As you should know, that the one who has been granted intelligence understands the aim of Saum and burdens himself with that which do not cause him to miss what is better for him. For Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu fasted little and would say, If I fast, I become too weak for salah, and I prefer salah over sa'um. And some of them, the Sahaba, would become too weak to recite the Quran if they fasted, and therefore would leave off fasting too much so as to be able to recite it. Every person is more aware of his own state and what benefits him. Zakullah mm -hmm. yeah. Khairan. Any question, any comments, any correction? Uh, yes, ma'am. You said no fasting on Saturday, then that sounds like you fasting. Like, say, for instance, you're going to fast on Friday, you have to fast on Thursday and Saturday. Or, because I know there's no fasting on Friday. Unless you fast the day before or the day after. All right, inshallah, we have one chapter more, which is going to be the chapter of Hajj. Hopefully, maybe we do it uh, uh, tomorrow night. And this will give us basically one fourth of the book, not in the quantity, uh, but it is. The Sheikh Rahmatullah Alay divides the book to four, four chapters. One is about the ibadah, which is the, the salah, the fasting, the zakah, and the hajj. Okay? So this will be the five pillars of Islam. So by taking this, this will be finished. After this will come the book of virtues. Okay? about things that a person should be doing or recommended and he has four books or four chapter ones ibadat form of worship so after this will come about habits and things that we do in our life talks about, you understand, social gathering and hospitality, guests and food and all the things, this will be a long one. But the intention, inshallah, is that we're going to, when we publish the book, instead of be a book of uh, four or five hundred pages, it's going to be according the chapters. So it will be the chapter of Ibadat. After this will be the chapter of habits, 
and after this chapter of things which is uh, forbidden or destructive things and after this will come the one which is things that supposed to uh, save the person like understand the sub hope fear of Allah things like this so this will make it easy on the people to study the book or to purchase the book or to enjoy the reading of the book inshallah so alhamdulillah and hopefully that by Ramadan inshallah we can be finishing the book at least reviewing it and inshallah may Allah give us the life and the time and the ability to publish it so it will be available for the Muslims inshallah سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك. Thank you for trying to finish it before you go. It's ten minutes before salah, so if you did you finish? Okay, can you finish it? Jazakallah khair.